Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Now, dear Heavenly Fathers, we open thy word to study. Lead us for Jesus' sake. We'll give God the praise in Christ's dear name. Amen. Now, I'm delivering a series of sermons this month on the subject, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in this age of compromise, or rather as compared to the gospel of this age of compromise. The gospel of Jesus as compared to the gospel that we're hearing today. Now, beloved, I'm not a critic. I'm not a religious critic. I'm not a holier than thou. I'm a saved missionary Baptist minister. Now, maybe some of you don't know what a missionary Baptist is. It doesn't mean a thing in the world except we believe in missions and we believe in sending the gospel to the four corners of the earth. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I'm a missionary Baptist minister. I believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the return of the Lord. I believe in the blood atonement. I believe in the fundamentals of the faith. I'm not a religious fanatic. I haven't soured on the world, but we might as well face facts. God calls men to preach and deliver the message that is fitting for the day in which they live. The gospel is the same gospel. But, beloved, we're living in an hour when certain messages need to be delivered as never before. God told Daniel, he said, Daniel, shut up the book, seal up the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, knowledge shall be increased, and so on. Now, we we need to face the needs of today, and we need to cry aloud and spare not. Now, I want us to see the gospel of Jesus Christ compared to the gospel that we are hearing today, the gospel of compromise. And at the present, we're studying the Sermon on the Mount. Now, today we begin with chapter 7, and the Bible says, Judge not that you be not judged. Well, you say, Mr. Green, that's what you're doing. I beg your pardon. I beg your most humble pardon. You know, we're living in a day when it's the most difficult to preach the Word of God that's ever been in the history of mortal man. If you preach against sin, they say you're a critic. You're a critic and a fault finder. They'll do it, my friend. The vast majority of church members today do not want to be reminded of their worldliness and of their sin and of their ungodliness. And they'll get mad with the preacher when he does it. I'm not judging. In Matthew 7 and verse 20, the Lord Jesus said, By their fruits ye shall know them. Now, you can't get around that. That's God's infallible word, and you'll have to face it at the judgment bar of God. The Bible says, Judge not. That's right. Judge not. All right? He goes on down. Here's what he says. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. With what measure you meet, shall be measured you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thy own eye? Thou hypocrite. Now, brother, that's a word that has been outlawed. And I say this tenderly, and the preacher that gets mad with me, There's not but one thing wrong with that dear man. He's guilty, and I say that tenderly. I love preachers. God knows if anybody on earth ought to love each other, it ought to be preachers. But if anybody on earth ought to stand by one another, it ought to be preachers. We ought to love one another. We ought to stand by one another. But today, my friend, I'm afraid that there's a lot of disloyalty to each other among the ministers of the gospel. Now, let me tell you, listen... I love preachers. I wouldn't hurt it. God said, touch not mine anointing. I got better sense. But a man or a, a man that will not preach the word of God and will not declare the whole counsel of God and will not tell his people what the Bible says, brother, he's worse, God bless you, than a bank robber. A bank robber can steal your money, but a man that'll pussyfoot the gospel and soft soap the gospel will steal your soul and you'll go to hell blind guides leading the blind. Now, what did he say? 
He said, thou hypocrite. How long has it been since you heard that word, God bless you, where you go to church? Now, I'm not criticizing. If the Son of God called them hypocrites, why shouldn't I call them hypocrites? A man or a woman that is in an official place in a church and a place of leadership, and they're trying to lead people in a Sunday school class or a young people's organization, or they're trying to carry out or conduct some part of the Lord's work in a church, and they live in the world and of the world, and they participate of the world, and yet they are supposed to be spiritual advisors, God says they're hypocrites. How can you pull the, uh, the mold out of a person's eye if you've got a beam in your own? How in the name of common sense can a person that lays out in the theaters and the dance halls and the nightclubs and the beer gardens and the taverns and the places of amusement in the world half Saturday night and come dragging in at midnight, how in the name of common sense can they instruct a class of little boys and girls and teach boys and girls on Sunday morning? How in the name of common sense can a man that participates in every worldly amusement that hell has and tells dirty jokes and takes a cocktail and a bottle of beer occasionally. How in the name of common sense can that man teach a class of intermediate boys or junior boys or a class of men for that matter? Now, when you are full of the world and sin and you're living a double life yourself according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're a hypocrite. That word doesn't sound so good, hypocrite. Listen at it. Don't hear it much today, do we? But I'm going to tell you the Son of God didn't compromise with them. He told them, brother, straight in their teeth. He said, hypocrite, thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clear to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. I tell you, my beloved friends, it's a sad, sad, heartbreaking, soul-rending predicament that the religious world is in today. How many, how many Sunday school teachers, how many deacons and stewards and elders, and how many professing Christians do you know that you can tell by the way they live, the way they act, the songs they sing, the places they go, the things they do, the company they keep? How can you, how many do you know that you can tell by their daily living that they are a child of God? and they walk with the king and they love Jesus with all of their heart. I thank God there's some. Yes, indeed they are. I'm glad that God still has his faith a remnant that has not bowed down their knees to the bales of modernism, the bales of worldliness, and the bales of religious dictatorship. Some people think that it doesn't make any difference what they do just so they go to church on Sunday and go through the rituals and the program and take the Lord's Supper. I'm saying if you're not living right, if you're not living like a Christian ought to live, you'd be better off, God bless you, if you never did take the Lord's Supper again, and if you never did take part in another service. If you're not right with God in your heart, hell will be hotter for you after you live a hypocritical life and die in your hypocrisy than it would have been if you'd have stayed away from the church and never had any part in the church. Now, that's Scripture. That's the, the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'll point it out before I finish this series of ser uh, sermons on the gospel of Jesus, all right? Jesus said, Judge not, you'll be judged with what judgment you judge. You'll be uh, The measurement that you measure will be meted out to you. Now, he said, if you got a beam in your own eye, don't try to get the moat out of other people's eye. Listen, preachers, evangelists, Sunday school teachers and young people's leaders and church officials ought to live clean, consecrated, separated, dedicated, spirit-filled, prayerful lives. And if they don't, they're living a hypocrite. Might as well face it. Might as well face it, beloved. There's no need, there's no need, God bless your heart, to shut your eyes and say, well, I don't think the Bible means that. Well, I think the Bible means exactly what it says and says exactly what it means. And God bless you, I figure that God Almighty's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, had wisdom enough to put down what he wanted us to see and what he wanted us to know, and he said it in an understandable fashion. Now then, in the next place, he says, Give not that which is holy, under dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under feet, under their feet, 
and turn again to rend you. Now, what does it mean by that? What's he talking about? Give not that which is holy unto dogs, and cast not your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Now, he's talking about the precious, holy word of God. The words of God. The word of God is holy. It's pure. Now, we're not to cast these pearls before swine. Now, what do we mean by that? We are not to argue the word of God and drag the word of God down in the gutters of argument with a bunch of skeptics, agnostics, modernists, and atheists. I don't debate the Word of God. I preach it. I preach it. When I get a letter and I get some, God bless you, brother, that'll almost fill a trash can. Some of them I have to pay postage on to get them out of the post office. I regret that. I certainly hate to waste the Lord's money uh, putting postage on a letter that didn't have enough on it. And then when I, I don't mind it if it's a letter that's, that's a letter that uh, somebody needs help or somebody, bless your heart, is trying to help me. But if it's one of these letters that's telling me how to preach, and brother, I'm telling you, I wish you could read some of the letters I get from these would-be brainy religionists who tell me how dead wrong I am and how sure right they are, but they always warp and twist and take a little here and take a little there and take a little somewhere else to prove their point. And they write in those letters. But, brother, when I read one of them and I discover that that's what it is, I never finish it. I just tear it right half and two, put it in the waste basket, and let it be. Listen, I'm not going to sit on a pew. I'm not going to stand on the street corner. I'm not going to stand in the pulpit. I'm not going to stand in a group of people and argue the Word of God. I had a fellow in my meeting the other night. He said all churches were of the devil, all churches were of Satan, there wasn't one of them of God. Now listen, I didn't say that. You listen to me. Don't you cut the radio off. This man in my service said all denominations and all churches and all preachers except him were of the devil and of the synagogue of devil and all the churches and all the church folks going to hell. I don't believe that. And he was right in the middle of my service passing out his literature now, what did I do? Did I walk down and start an argument with him? No. You know what I did? I just slid right down off my platform, took him by the arm, and led him to the back of the tent. I said, now listen, friend, you can pass out all of that stuff you want to on the streets and the sidewalks, but you can't pass it out in my tent or in my revival meeting, whether I'm in a church or the tent or wherever I am. Now, listen, I, I'm not rude, but you know what the Bible says. You turn to Second John. And the Bible says, if they come in unto you and bring not the doctrine of Jesus Christ, do not invite him into your house and do not bid him Godspeed. If you do, you ought to partake of evil. You say, preacher, I I don't think you should have done that. I think you ought to be nice to everybody. You might be able to win them. You think so? You think so? What did Jesus mean? He said, cast not your pearls before swine, neither give that which is holy to dogs. Listen, when a man tells me that I'm of the devil, and my church is of the devil, and my denominations of the devil, and all the churches, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, holiness of the devil, I, listen, brother, that man, I can't help him, you can't help him, and I say this reverently and humbly, but I'm afraid that he's crossed God's deadline, and I'm afraid there's no hope for for him. Because when you start judging and pronouncing all churches and church people to hell, I'm afraid you've gone a step too far. Now, God has his born-again, blood-washed, redeemed in the Baptist church, Methodist church, Presbyterian church, Holiness church, and some other churches that I could name, but I don't have time to go down the line. But what I'm saying to you is this. If you're just a church member, then that's not enough. But if you're born again, you ought to get in the church. And I believe when you're truly born, you will get in the church. And listen, I'm not going to let any man pass out poison doctrine and poison literature in a revival meeting that I'm conducting, whether it's in a tent or a church or wherever it is. I'm not going to do it. It's my business to contend for the faith It's my business to preach and warn, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. And I must do it. I dare not fail to do it. If I do, then people's blood will be on my hands. So I just ask the gentleman to please 
just step right out from under my tent and stop passing out his poison. And he did. He did. We didn't have a fight. No, I don't fight. God bless you. I, I don't dob up my fist and fight, but God bless your heart. I'll take him by the arm. If a man comes to my door and says, Mr. Green, here's some uh, literature I want you to read. There's no hell, no trinity. Jesus is not coming back again. You don't need blood to be saved. He wasn't virgin born. If they start passing me some stuff like that, I'll invite them to get back on the sidewalk get back in the street. Now, Jesus said, if they come, do not bid them Godspeed. Do not invite them into your house. Why, well, you say, preacher, I'll let anybody in my house. Why, well, I'll be kind to anybody. Listen, you don't have to be nasty. You don't have to be ugly. But when you befriend a false prophet, and when you take in a false prophet that is sowing damnable heresies in your community, and when you take in a person that denies the doctrine of Jesus Christ, according to my Bible, you are sinning, and you are bidding that false prophet God speed, and I say, woe be unto you when you stand before Almighty God. When I say, preacher, how am I going to know who's false and who isn't false? Listen, if, you, if somebody comes to your door and somebody tries to give you a pamphlet, and you look at it, and you don't know by looking at it whether it's true or false. You ask them if they believe Jesus shed his blood for the remission of sins, if they believe in the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You ask them if they believe Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth again. You say, sir, do you believe Jesus Christ was virgin born? Do you believe in a literal, everlasting, burning hell? And you just keep on going down the line. God bless you on the fundamentals of the faith. You'll hit the nail on the head in a minute, and you'll see them start stuttering and stammering and spitting and sputtering. And when they do, give them their literature back. Don't keep it. It's dangerous. I warn you. I warn you. A rattlesnake can bite your body, and if you get to the doctor quick enough, they can give you a serum that will cure you of the rattlesnake bite. But I warn you, my friend, if the snakes of hell... Bite your soul through the poison doctrines that are being distributed today. I warn you, you'll wake up in the pits of the screaming where there'll be no hope throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Now, we're not to give that which is holy to dogs. We are not to cast our pearls before swine. Do you think I'd get on the platform with an atheist and argue the word of God? Do you think I'd take the holy, precious scriptures of Jesus and get on the platform of a man that says he was an illegitimate and born out of wedlock? Do you think I'd get on the platform and take the precious word of God, John 3, 16, the 23rd Psalm, and the precious words of God? Do you think I would, uh, you think I would drag the holy word of God and let him trample it under his atheistic feet and make fun of God's word? No. Listen, I will sit all night long. I will sit all day long and reason with any poor sinner any poor backslider, any poor deceived soul. But I won't argue the word of God with a smart false religionist, with an atheist, with an agnostic. I will not argue God's word. I will not bring the holy things of God and let them trample them under their feet and laugh and snigger and mock at the holy word of God. I won't do it. And I will not argue with a false teacher. A man that denies a virgin birth won't argue with him. A man that denies a literal burning hell, I won't argue with him. A man that denies the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy, I won't argue with him. I will not argue with him. I refuse to argue with him. Cast not your pearls before swine. Listen, there are too many hungry sinners dead in trespasses and sin that need to be one to God for you and me to spend our time arguing with a bunch of atheists, agnostics, and haters of God, and modernists who deny the word God. Now listen, preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. Just tell them what Jesus says, and leave it there, and don't argue. Don't try to convince them, except as you preach, and live, and teach the word of God. That's the only way that you can ever help anybody, is through the Word of God. If they won't believe what the Bible says, they certainly wouldn't believe your argument. 
They wouldn't believe my argument. Preach the Word. Preach the Word. Preach the Word. Teach the Word. Teach the words of Jesus. And call folks hypocrites if they live like a hypocrite. If they live like swine and dogs, don't cast your pearls before them. They'll make fun of you. They'll laugh at you. They'll trample them under your feet. Beloved, we're living in a day when many men have no respect for God, no respect for God's Word, and no respect for holy things. But I thank God that throughout this great country and other countries as well, there are still those who believe in the blood-stained gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus brought down the living word, and I'm giving it to you day by day, and we shall continue. May God use this message today to help you, dear Christians, to be careful, be careful, be sober, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is walking around as a sheep in wolf's clothing, as we'll see in just a few verses. May God bless this message to your heart and to your help today is my prayer. Father, take the message and use it to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Save sinners, our Father. Reclaim backsliders and may Christians be established in the faith, built up in the faith, and more determined than ever to stand four square for God in Jesus' precious name. Amen.